Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for April 14th, 2023. Glad that you are with me today. Today is the National Day of Silence, a campaign that seeks to shed light on what many LGBTQ youth experience daily. National Ex-Spouse Day, Air Force Reserve Birthday, Ambedkar Jayanti, America's Day, and Cambodian New Year. Let's go ahead and get started. By God's great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now for our thanksgiving for baptism. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Eternal God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism, you call us to a new way of life in your realm of grace and peace. By the power of your Holy Spirit, let your will be done in our lives and in this world that you love, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our reading for today comes from Matthew chapter 20, starting with verse 8. We are continuing on in the parable of workers in the vineyard. Listen for God's word to speak to you. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat? But he replied to them, one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first. The first will be last. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, parable of the vineyard uh, and vineyard owner and workers in the field. So, just quick recap. Uh, vineyard o- owner goes out at 6 o'clock in the morning. It's time to harvest the grapes. Hires a bunch of people at 6 um, and says he's going to pay them the, the standard daily wage, a denarii, about $125-ish in today's money. Um, and then he hires a bunch of people at nine and he hires a bunch of people at noon and he hires a bunch of people at three and he hires a bunch of people at five. And now it's time to, to finish the day off. So he has everyone line up and he has them line up by the one who, the ones who were hired very last at five o'clock in the evening, right before sundown. Right. Um, and then on back to the, to the ones who were hired first. Now, up to this point, and this this is, I think, where 
I mentioned yesterday sort of the I heard a, a lecture of uh, John Dominic Crossan talking about this lecture or this parable specifically that the vineyard owner is kind of stingy. Um, he is hiring the the minimum basically, right? He doesn't hire if say he needed 50 people to um, to harvest all the grapes, he only hires 10 at six o'clock in the morning. And then he realizes that there's not enough and he, you know, probably those workers are saying, they, we're not gonna be able to do this today. You need more people. And then he goes out and hires more people, right? So up to this point, we have this expectation that he's kind of this uh, really sort of uh, shrewd, very miserly kind of person who's who's just hiring the the least amount, right? So then it's really surprising when those who are hired last, they actually receive a full day's wage. They receive a denarii. Again, like $125. And they've only worked a couple of hours. So first is the sort of initial shock of abundant grace. When it was not expected. The story is actually geared towards making us think that the, these people are going to He's going to uh, give them, you know, whatever it would be, a tenth of a denarii. Give them the, the absolute minimum that he has to, because he's shown himself to be kind of miserly. So it is amazing that he gives grace. It is amazing that he gives in such abundance. But that also sets up a a different situation because the people who are on the back of the line who were hired at the very beginning of the day they find out that the people who were just hired have gotten a full denarii and they think great i have worked so hard all day so therefore if they got a denarii i'm gonna get 10 denarii i'm gonna get six denarii you know whatever it is i'm gonna be paid more because i obviously worked more and harder. At least they assume they're working harder, you know, whatever. Anyways, um, and then they get paid a denarii. They get paid exactly what they had said that they were going to work for. And when they grumble about it, the, the owner says, hey, it's up to me to give grace. It's I've given you exactly what I told you I would give you. And why it doesn't affect you if I happen to be more gracious to the people who are hired last. It's meant to be a jarring answer. It's meant to say, wait a second, that's not fair, right? But that's so that you think about it. It's meant to make us think and wonder about, well, what, what could be going on here? Why is Jesus telling this story? Well, let's remember this context a little bit wider. This whole conversation began when there was a young man who apparently had a lot of money, wanted to know what he needed to do to earn eternal life. So that's the setup, right? What is it? How do we get eternal life? Jesus tells him, follow the commandments. He said he's done in the, the, his whole life. And Jesus says, you need to sell everything you own Give it to the poor and follow me. He goes away grieving because he has great possession. And Jesus remarks at how difficult it is for someone who is rich to get into the kingdom of heaven. Though notes that with God, all things are possible. Peter says, hey, we've given up everything, all of these things. Are we going to get anything back? Jesus says, sure, you're going to get stuff back and you're gonna get eternal life. That thing that the rich young ruler was asking about. He says, but the last will be first and the first will be last. And he tells this story. And to a certain extent, this is also a story about it's simultaneously the abundant grace of God, right? that gives to us, even if we come late to this, 
if we are hired at five o'clock in the evening, we get this amazingly generous reward, this grace of life eternal. But we also have some things, uh, we have some thoughts about other workers, don't we? And we can see how this idea of someone else getting the same reward as you, even though you worked way harder for it, can make you feel really not great. It's the dynamic that we see with the Pharisees and the Sadducees who are upset that the tax collectors and the prostitutes are coming to this kingdom of heaven. And in fact, Jesus says it's, they're getting into the kingdom of heaven before you. you're getting in. But they actually responded in a different way. And it doesn't seem like it's fair. Peter is worried about what's the reward that I'm going to receive if this guy, right? If he sells off all his stuff and follows you, he's coming at the, you know, we're almost done with this thing. We're in chapter 20, 20 right? <laughs> we were here at chapter one. Is he going to get the same reward as us? Yeah. Because we're all working to, for the kingdom. Now, I think it is better to have worked long, right? To enjoy a, a, an abundant life in this world, but ultimately the reward is eternal life with the living God. And that is already just amazingly graceful. And we're not actually going to get more, <laughs> more eternal life, right? If we've worked longer, harder. So maybe the implication is, why don't we treat each other with grace? And whether we've been at this work for decades or whether we've, we're just coming to it. We respect one another and we share with one another and we see where God is calling us here and now. To the work that God has called us to do. To be the kingdom of heaven here in this place. And yeah, new people have new ideas and old people have old ideas. God is able to use all of that work to bring in about abundant and abundant harvest. And God chooses to lavish us with grace, even though we didn't work all day to deserve it. So God gives graciously, God gives abundantly, God gives equitably. Our call is to see this as grace, to celebrate with those on whom grace, God's grace is favored. Come alongside those who are mourning to care for one another and not worry about who's first and who's last. Not worry about ego. Worry about who's worked harder or longer. To work together. To be God's people here and now. So I invite you to take some time in prayer and reflection and meditation and journaling and however you need to respond to this. What feelings does this draw up in you? This one can make people mad <laughs> because it's meant to make you think and be uncomfortable and, and consider these things. 
So how do you respond to those who have worked less or more? How do you respond to the abundant grace given to you? And how do you respond to the abundant grace given to others? When you're ready, we'll gather together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Loving God, as the rising sun chases away the night, so you have scattered the power of death in the rising of Jesus Christ. And you bring us all blessings in him. Especially we thank you for the ministry of word and sacrament. Those who serve and care for others. The affection of our friends. Your call to love and serve one another. The presence and power of your spirit. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for your abundant grace, our fellow workers, with wisdom and with passion, called to join us. Mighty God, with the dawn of your love, you reveal your victory over all that would destroy or harm, and you brighten the lives of all who need you. Especially we pray for the church in the Pacific region. Endangered species of animals and plants. those who are isolated by sickness or sorrow. Those who suffer mental anguish. All who seek the way and truth of Christ. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Tom, a friend of Bill's, who asked for courage and will to continue living a limited life. For friends of Beverly's. For wisdom and peace for the Mayfields. For Dick, a neighbor of De Dennis's, who is recovering from spinal surgery. For Sarah, Sue's relative and her children. For Robin and Jameson at the loss of Stuart, part of Sue's extended family. All those affected by the tornado in Wayne, Arkansas. For all those on our hearts and our minds.
You have shown your glory, O God, in raising Jesus from the dead. Raise us to new life in him and empower us to serve you. May your words be in our mouths, your strength in our arms, and your love in our hearts, that we may be worthy disciples of Jesus Christ, the living Lord. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church, USA. Our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. You can subscribe to this daily prayer on YouTube, on Substack, and on Spotify. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.